Hello, I hope you're making good progress and are ready to make the next rounds that you've completed your medallions. Here are mine, 11 medallions. Um, so we're ready to work the next round. We're going to need a shuttle attached to the ball, so you're going to fill it. It doesn't need to be completely full. In fact, what it needs is to be twice the full length of your circle, approximately. Put it at you know put a bit more on your bobbin to be sure because you don't want to run out but basically what's coming off the bobbin of your shuttle is the core thread and that's going to go around this like that twice because we're going to make the next two rounds continuously so twice around plus a bit more is what you need to put on your shuttle be a bit generous so you don't run out and then leave it attached to your ball the next round we're going to make is the bottom edge of the collar i'm going to start with the bottom edge and finish with the neck edge and so what we're going to be making is this and it's a small ring here that joins in between the medallions, then seven stitches, skip one ring and join, 11 stitches, skip one ring and join, 18 stitches, skip two rings and join, 11 stitches, skip one ring and join, seven stitches, skip one ring, and then make the ring that joins in between medallions. If you've done it correctly, you should have 12 free rings in between each joinings of the medallions. And I see you noticing already that I have two medallions here that have little red pins on. And that's because that's where I went wrong. And I actually have 13 here underneath on those two and not 12, which means I have fewer here at the top as well. So I went wrong on these two and it's possible this happened to you as well because it wasn't always obvious to figure out which two were the central rings here to join on the sides. So if you've encountered the same problem with yours, do not worry, we're going to improvise a little bit on those two and it's going to be fine. I'm not taking mine apart and starting again, so you don't need to with yours either, unless you really want to. But hopefully most of the medallions, if not all of them, should have 12 free rings actually on both sides here. So we're going to start actually with the back side facing, not the front side. And that's because we're going to do the the next two rounds continuously and I want the next round to be forward facing because the next round has picots on it. This one has only chains so it's not really noticeable. It doesn't really matter that you're making it from the back. And you want to count for where you want to start. So you're starting here on the left edge. You want to be on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth pico is where you want to join to start this round. So just pull a loop through and pass your shuttle through it. I'm going to remove my pin. I don't need that. It's just to mark the right ring to start on. So we're wrapping for a chain. And we're starting with 11 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we skip one ring and join to the next one. And next we're making 18 stitches, a chain of 18 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And we are skipping two rings and joining to the next. Like that. And now we're repeating the 11, a chain of 11 stitches and skip one ring and join to the next. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Skip one ring, join to the next. And now we're making seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're not joining, we're reversing work because we're going to make the ring now. And now we're facing the front. So that's another reason to start from the back so that your rings face front. So wrapping for a ring, two stitches, two, and we skip one ring, join to the next, let me flip my work out of the way, two stitches again, so one stitch to one half stitch to complete the join and one more stitch the work back and we're joining now where we have joined before between the two medallions and this flip the work over again out of the way two stitches and then it's joined to the next ring the next free pico like this and two more stitches to complete this small ring one two and close the ring like this now I'm going to show you something because I did examine everything I looked at the pattern and I looked at the way it was written and you will see that in fact they join between the two rings so they would have been joining here in between the two instead of on the end pico and I did try it but I found it just sort of everything ended up on top of each other. You know, it just kind of squashed the rings and this chain ended up on top of the other ring. And I didn't see the point really of joining in between rings when, when here it's joined on the, on the pico like this. And here it's joined in between the rings. And I don't see that that was necessary. So I decided to join on the pico every time instead of in between rings. So now we're going to reverse work and we're ready to carry on with the chains. So we're doing a chain of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip one ring and join to the next. And now a chain of eleven. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Skip one ring and join to the next. And now a ring of eighteen stitches. One, two, three. Seventeen, eighteen. And now we skip two rings and join to the next. And now a chain of eleven. Two. Ten. Eleven. Skip one ring and join to the next. Oops. Get loose. And now seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. And now we reverse work to make the ring. So it's a ring of two stitches, two, we skip one ring again and join to the next. Flip the work over out of the way, two stitches and join at the same place where you joined before between the two medallions. And two stitches. One, two. And now we join to the next pico. Flipping the work over to complete the ring. One, two stitches, and close the ring. Like this. So you can see it taking shape. I'm going to make a couple more and I'm going to meet you back or meet you here to show you what I'm going to do for the one that has too many rings at the bottom. So I'll show you what I'll do. So if you have the same problem, you can do the same thing. I'll see you in a minute. Here I am at the ring that has the red pin on it. So this is a ring that has 13 instead of 12. And I'll show you what we're going to do in this case. And I wanted to say as well, if you have the same problem as me and on some of your medallions, you have more than 12 rings on one side. If you could possibly try to have those facing, you know, those used in the bottom edge, because you want this to be wider here and narrower here. So if the use the side that has more rings for the bottom edge of the collar if possible. So I've made the little ring in between and I'm ready to make the next chain. So seven stitches after the ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, skip one ring, join to the next, and eleven stitches, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Skip one ring, bloop. skip one ring, join to the next. And now 18 stitches, a chain of 18 stitches, two, three, Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and skip two rings, join to the next. And this at the next step is where I'm going to fix the extra ring. So we're going to make eleven stitches, two, three. Ten, eleven, and what I'm going to do here is join two rings together. So I'm going to skip one and join the next two together, like this. So then, when I make the next bit, I'm going to do the seven stitches, and then I'm going to join here.
so I think visually it will look fine. I don't think it's going to be very noticeable. So if you have the same problem, you can fix it in the same way. Cinq, six. Oh, sorry, I started counting in French. Seven. And now we're going to reverse work. And make the ring. Two stitches. Skip one ring and join to the next. Two stitches. Join between the medallions where you join the two rings before. Flip the work out of the way. Two stitches. And join to the next free ring on the other side. And two stitches. Two. Close the ring. So at the moment, as you can see, it doesn't curve very much, but we're going to make it curve once we get to doing the neck edge. Yes. And you can see here that it's, I suppose this chain does look a little bit closer to the ring where we've joined to two, but I don't think, I think once the collar is completed, you're not really going to notice. So that's how I'm going to improvise where I've made a mistake, where I joined my medallions and we'll have to do the same thing when we come to do the neck edge because we'll have one fewer rings on this side. So I'm going to carry on now as we're repeating the same thing and I'll meet you back near the end here just to show you where we finished and then turn the corner and go back around for the second round. And here I am at the last chain 11 for this round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, skip one ring and join to the next. I actually think before I start again, because you should really be more in between the scallops, I'm going to join to the next one as well before starting the next round. Like this. And reverse work and we're going to start on the next round. It's still not curving very much at all but hopefully when we get to the neckline we'll be able to pull it in here at the neck. So the next round here on the bottom edge You're making chains of four picots separated by three stitches on the shorter chain and six picots separated by three stitches on the longer chain. And here we're going to make just one pico, so we'll have three stitches, one pico, three stitches. So we're starting by three stitches, two, three, pico. I'm making them quite small, the picots. One, two, three stitches, a pico. Three stitches. A third pico. Three stitches. A fourth pico. And three stitches. Like this, and we're joining between chains of the previous round. So this round is easier because we don't need to count our little rings because the shape's already made. Now we're just following the shape that we made on the previous round. And now we're making four, sorry, now we're making six picots separated by three stitches. Three. A 
Bico, three stitches. Bico, three stitches. Third Bico, three stitches. Fourth Bico, three stitches. Fifth Bico, three stitches. Oops. And a sixth Bico, and three more stitches. And we're joining between the chains of the previous round. And now we're making again, repeating this chain, four picots separated by three stitches. Two, three stitches, one picot, two, Three stitches, one pico, three stitches, a third pico, three stitches, and the fourth pico, and three stitches to complete the chain. Three, oops, and we join between the chains of the previous round. And here is where I've modified from the original pattern, because as I explained in the previous um, short video, I was just finding that this piece here, this is where you make a mirror image. Basically, you just make a mirror what you've done in the previous round, so the chains would curve that way instead with the ring going down here. And I just found when I went to go to do the next round, it was just pushing everything under and it just wouldn't fit for me. So I've actually carried on making the same chains for in between the scallops as well. So we're making three stitches, one pico, and three stitches, and join. And the same again. So three stitches. A pico and three stitches. And join.